Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, I want to talk about the graph of sine and cosine. So of course, these are two very important functions when it comes to trigonometry. And we want to be able to visually see what they look like if we make their graph. Um, I'm going to start off by showing you some tips if you want to create these graphs yourself. And near the end of the video, we'll explain why these graphs look the way they do, why they have this wonderful wavy motion. Okay, so let's first start off with building a graph. When I go to build just a basic graph of, of sine, there's a few key points I put on there to, to help me get the big picture. The first two key points I like to put down is where it takes on its maximum value and its minimum value. So the highest point on sine is at 1, and the lowest point on sine is at negative 1. The next thing I start marking out is uh, some key places where its period starts and stops. Uh, for example, if I want to graph one period, I think of it starting at uh, 0 and then stopping at 2 pi. Now it's important to note that the graph of sine doesn't really start or stop anywhere. It actually continues in both directions, uh, but I would like to start off graphing one period, and then you'll see that we can extend that as far as we want. Okay, so I have the high point, the low point, where one period would begin and end, and now I want to think of the shape of it. The shape of it is going to be this nice S-curve. Uh, when we get halfway through at exactly pi, we should be going through the X-axis. So now we just want to make that nice S-shape. So there's one peak, there's the bottom peak, and there's one period. So this is a nice basic uh, graph for sine that I can start off with. And then if I really wanted other values or other angles, I'd recognize that this thing really does continue on. In fact, it just keeps going up and down uh, with this period of 2 pi. So the next guy hits out here would be at 3 pi on the x-axis, then come back up at 4 pi, you know, away we go. And of course, we'd go this way as well, so down. It would hit there at negative pi, and just continue on. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the graph of cosine and get some key values for that. Cosine is very similar. I'd still start off with a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. Like before, I'd start marking some key values on the x-axis. Uh, I like to think of one period as starting at 0 and then stopping at 2 pi. But for this one, it, it does have more of a u-shape for it. Um, the weird part is it's actually the same shape as sine, but it's just been moved over by a little bit. So let's see, the halfway point will be at pi, and I also like to mark the quarter point, so this would be at pi over two, and three pi over two. It's at these places where we will actually cross the x-axis. When we get to the halfway point, we'll be at negative one. When we're at two pi, we'll be all the way up here at one. All right, so let's draw it out. So starting up here, we're going down through the x-axis, Bottoming out right at pi, going back up, going through that 3 pi over 2, or at least trying, and peaking out right at 2 pi. So here is one cycle or one period of cosine, and of course even this guy continues on. So it would drop back down again, bottom out, continue back up, and it'd go the other way as well. And this is what I mean by it. it looks exactly like sine, it's just been shifted over. You can still see that wavy motion, that S shape of sine, um, but it has been moved over. So some key values that of course we get for here is um, we have that it crosses through the x-axis at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Um, and the next one out here, you can imagine going 2 pi and then just an additional pi over 2. So this would be our 5 pi over 2. All right. So those are our basic graphs for sine and cosine. Now let's explain just a little bit more of why it gets this wonderful wavy motion. Our trig functions, of course, uh, you can think of them coming from our unit circle. And if you want, you can think of the uh, coordinates on a unit circle. Those are what's really generating our values that we're going to put on our graph. So imagine you were uh, looking for the graph of sine of x and you're going to use your unit circle to help you out in this process. You'd first want to think of what are some key angles on your unit circle, 
And since we are dealing with sine, you'd specifically wonder, hey, what are the y values? The process would be exactly the same if you were working with cosine, but then you'd work with the x values. So let's see what we get for some of our key values. When we're at an angle of zero, the y value would simply be zero. When we're at pi over six, that's our first major angle there, uh, we'd be at one half for our y value. For pi over four, I have square root of two over two. And for pi over three, looks like we're at square root of three over two. And finally, straight up and down at pi over two, we have a value of one. Now this corresponds to the values you see on that first little uptick of sine. So it starts off at zero, which is sure enough our y value at zero. And it starts increasing and increasing after that. And it, it gets bigger and bigger until it hits pi over two. That's where it grabs that maximum. Now as we continue around the unit circle, we'll see those same values uh, show up again but now we will be decreasing that angle sweeping around and now we're getting smaller and smaller values uh, for our sign so sure enough in the graph now we're gonna see this go down it's gonna get smaller and smaller until eventually when we're right at pi we get a value of zero so this is that pi as we continue to sweep around the unit circle we get the same values, but now that we're below the x-axis, we're getting the negatives. So negative one half, negative square root of two over two, and negative square root of three over two. So almost the exact same shape, but now we're in the negatives. We bottom out right here. This is when we're straight down at three pi over two. And then from there, we'd imagine going back up, still in the negatives. Uh, but negative square root of three over two, negative root two over two, negative one half, and eventually returning back at zero when we reach that uh, angle of zero. So back up at two pi. And of course, that's just one trip around the unit circle. I could make another trip around the circle, in which case we'd just simply graph out the same shape a little bit further down. And I could have gone around the unit circle in the other direction, so we could even extend it this way. So the graph of sine uh, extends in both directions infinitely. And you can see that really we're just keeping track of that y value as we go around the unit circle, getting this wonderful wavy motion. And again, the same thing would happen for cosine, but now we'd keep track of the x values. All right, some other things you may want to know about sine. Uh, this repeated section right here where it makes one full cycle, this is what we call the period of the function. And for sine, the period is 2 pi. Also, the maximum and minimum value, the way we keep track of that is we call this the amplitude. So we say that the amplitude is 1 corresponding to that maximum peak. All right. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.